have a sort of new team a bit, new staff, new players, young players. So we weren't always consistent. I think this season we've been super consistent in the way we play. That's a comfortable feeling also going into every game. Uh, I think we are way more experienced now and, and, and yeah, like confident about ourselves. We asked um, Barcelona's Kira Walsh if there was a step up from the WSL since her move to Barcelona. She said her answer was that the coaching and the technical development and the defensive aspect had improved her more. Have you found it the same since you've made the move from the WSL to Wolfsburg? Or have you seen something else? I would say it's just different football cultures. I think in Germany and especially Wolfsburg is a very big and experienced club in women's football. If it plays Champions League for years, it has won Champions Leagues. And since the day I came here, I've really felt that more at where I was before at Arsenal and Bayern. So, yeah, for me, that is a big difference. I feel here that this is a team that plays, really plays to win every uh, cup that there is, Champions League, League and and the, and the cup. So I think for me, that's that's a bigger difference. A lot of your national team uh, teammates have are playing abroad. How much has that helped? From what you've seen in the national team, how much has that helped sort of develop your your national side? Yeah, very much. Yeah, going abroad is very good for your development as a as a player, but also as a person. Uh, it helps you grow a lot and very fast. I think you have to grow up quickly, uh, especially so if you're a young player and going abroad. Yeah, you need to really adapt and and yeah, like you grow up faster, also on the pitch. Um, you need to perform every t- training because if you don't, you won't play. Um, so it's, there's more, the competitiveness is, is higher and, and that makes you develop faster. Oh, yeah, I was just about to ask you what it was like moving abroad at a young age. What was the most or one of the most difficult things about moving abroad at, I think it was, tw- how old were you? 21, perhaps, I think? Uh, 20, I think. 20. Going from 19 to 20, yeah. Um, what advice yeah. Give uh, young girls who are aspiring to to become a professional footballer as well. I think uh, the most difficult thing is like going out of your comfort zone, but that's also my advice. I think it's very important um, because as I said it helps you grow up faster and and overcome certain uh, insecurities or whatever. And uh, if you always stay in your comfort zone, I don't think you will get everything out of yourself in your career. And if you go out of it, you will. We have seen women's football develop massively over the last few years in terms of its global popularity. Um, what do you make of the future for the women's game? And are, is there anything you would like to see improved in the game? I hope and I think it will keep um, growing growing and developing like, like this, especially in England. It's going super well uh, with also with spectators at games and, and uh, television and streams and everything. Um, and yeah, what I hope is that that's not only going to be in England, but in every in every league. For example, in Holland, we need this uh, super much also, um, and that that in in leagues like in Holland, the the first two three teams they have good facilities and everything is perfect, but the lower teams they are struggling, and that's also here in Germany and also in Spain. So I think that's very important that. Um, yeah, that they invest also in the in the lower teams because then you have a more competitive league and then the level goes up. And we we see obviously male footballers transferred for tens of millions all the time. Um, the women's record transfer fee at the moment is about four hundred thousand pounds. How far do you think we're away from seeing the first million pound transfer or the first ten million pound or euro transfer? Ten million, I think, uh, <laughs> far, but. I mean, the amounts are going up super fast, I feel like, the, the last few months, and it will only continue to grow. Uh, I think uh, close to the men's numbers, we won't get there anytime soon. But, um, yeah, like, I, th- I feel like it's it's growing super fast. It's developing um, super fast. I've spoken to some other um, female footballers before, and they've and you just mentioned how... You would like to see some infrastructure change in the women's game. Um, and, and one thing that one footballer said was that it was, I think, playing at a lower level. It was harder to recover from injuries because she didn't have the same support as 
for example, that male footballers would have at that level. Did you experience that struggle at any point in your in your career at all? No, I personally didn't. I also have to, I, I never really got injured uh, badly. But obviously that's super important. And also there is a big difference in, for example, here at Wolfsburg, the, the medical staff is super good. But I also know that in, in lower clubs, it's not like that. And obviously that is that is key, that is super important. So we see that, obviously, I just mentioned about the the football transfers in, in the men's game and we also know their their wages are really astronomically high as well what do you think can be done to improve the the way the club wages in women's football as they tend to be more equal uh within the national sides yeah it's super difficult because i think um the difference in club teams between men and and, and women is is super big and i don't think that will change anytime soon and um i don't know why that is that's just how it is uh, and i think it's also super difficult to change that uh, super soon because it's just we're super behind women's was behind and that's that's a fact um i'm super happy for example in holland with the national team it's it's equal and and that's that's amazing and you hear it in more and more countries but yeah difference in the league um yeah, are still there and obviously that's one of the most important things that that yeah like the women's league need need more help especially the lower teams but uh, yeah it's it's i don't think that will change very very quickly earlier you mentioned about the culture change when you moved to wolfsburg what's different about the culture that it's also depending on clubs but i think at wolfsburg uh, you can tell that it's a very experienced club and one of the biggest clubs in in women's football. Um, I felt that, as I said, like the first day I came here, it's very professional. Um, and then I'm talking about the medical stuff, but also on what we do on the pitch and the analysis and everything. Um, I'm not saying it's not like that in the WSL, but I think this is a very experienced club and it has been for many, many years. And I think the WSL has now been growing the last few years. But yeah, you can tell here in Germany that it's been a longer period of of being successful. And and finally, Jill, what would your what are your personal goals for let's say the next year at the end of the season? What would you like to see develop in your game? What would you like to see yourself achieve? Well, obviously, I hope to win uh, <laughs> everything. Yeah, I'm not someone who looks very like long term. I mean, the season's not long anymore, but like I personally have never felt so close to to reaching the Champions League final, which is which is a dream itself. And and uh, so that's my goal for now, being in the Champions League final, and uh, at the same time. Yeah, we still have a chance to win the league, uh, to win the cup here and uh, playing a Champions League final and winning it is, is obviously a dream for me and then the whole team.